Okay, hi, and uh, a very warm welcome uh, to another in-between uh, event of the uh, Print Fellas event. Um, I'm happy to share today's stage with uh, Vitalis Salos from Eskitet. Hi, Vitalis. Yeah, hi, Tobias. Hi, all, all the listeners. Uh, happy to be here. Um, we choose to to do some some kind of in between contents between the uh, events of the of uh, Finn Fellows um, to to get a little bit uh, deeper and a bit of, a little bit more personal about uh, several platforms and uh, several persons. Uh, so today so today you are here and uh, we are happy um, you you got the time and uh, we'll we'll answer some questions here. Um, so let's talk a little bit uh, about you as a person at first and your way into B two B lending. Um, so maybe you can you can start uh, with the first question, which is uh, from where are you? Where are you living today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm from Riga, Latvia. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, during the uh, summertime, most of the time I'm in Latvia. But uh, when it's when it gets colder here, I, I start to look uh, around for 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 warmer places. So that 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 that's a, in the the way of my thinking during the, the last three years and, and i think uh, it will continue to be like that for, for the nearest uh, years so from september to november I'm, I'm still usually in europe as it is uh, still possible to, to find uh, warm places uh, in europe but but when uh, when it's when it's not uh, warm anymore anymore also in the european countries then uh, then i I tend to go so much closer to equator. So uh, last three winters, I have been working remotely from Africa and Southeast Asia. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, the plan is uh, to continue being in warmer places uh, when it is cold in Europe. So yeah, that, that's that's my thinking about uh, ab about uh, about my life uh, for now. Okay, cool. I mean, uh, living in Latvia always uh, has a has a quite long period of of time where it's not really warm, not really sunny. So it's a very good decision. So you're also uh, quite uh, quite young at the age. Um, uh, so so you're a little bit of unbound, and uh, it's, it's there is specific um, uh, a specific uh, place where you always go uh, during those times, or is it is it different? Uh, do you mean uh, during the times when I'm outside in Latvia, uh, yeah, right. or when I'm in Latvia? Uh, yeah, when I'm inside, actually every year it, it has been different. So, so first, okay. uh, uh, first of those years, um, I just uh, uh, wanted to go to see to see Asia because I have heard good stories about about it, and then I just wanted to experience uh, myself. And then uh, second second uh, winter was um, uh, the COVID winter, and in a way it was harder to uh, access the countries where I wanted to go. So. I, I kind of checked it all from from other perspective that I was just checking for the countries uh, which are open and then uh, made decisions in such a way. So so yeah, for example, uh, like not this winter but winter before, I was in Africa in Tanzania because back then Tanzania was quite open uh, to, to, to 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 the tourists and uh, that's why that's why I made decision to to, to to go there. And uh, last year, uh, or last winter, Asia was again reopening, and and, and um, all the other countries was were still more or less closed, or or those countries were having uh, not that comfortable time zone for me. So that's why I again decided uh, to go to to, um, to to Southeast Asia and uh, Thailand in, in in that winter, just because I, I knew that I have been there, I know how things working are working there, I know that uh, I can access it, and and uh, and that's why as it was still COVID times in, in the world, I just made decision not to not to maybe risk too much in terms of um, going to places that that uh, where I haven't been, and that's why I decided to go just to Thailand where I have already been living before, and and the, and the country which, which I like. Okay, very cool. Very nice uh, example of of, of a lifestyle. Uh, so come on a little bit uh, uh, to to your person and uh, P two P lending. Uh, do you always wanted uh, to be active in in P two P lending, or uh, did your first uh, idea of of getting a job was more or less like the typical astronaut or fireman? Uh, yeah, actually, this is a good question. Uh, I would say that since kindergarten, uh, I have I remember that I have always been good uh, with numbers. 
I, I don't really kind of recall thinking about uh, a profession uh, I, I want to have in my future, but but uh, but yeah, as, as I have always been good with numbers, I, I just uh, have always thought that I should try myself uh, in the finance industry the, uh, as, uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, as, as, as I'm good with numbers, that probably that's, that's the industry I have to try. Um, and uh, yeah, so so and uh, in such a way, in such a way, um, I ended up uh, in a bank as as one of the first uh, positions in, in in my career, and uh, and yeah, this is how my professional journey started. Okay, so let's talk about the bank. It was uh, Nordia, uh, which is quite strong in in the Scandinavia and the Baltics, as far as I know. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, can you can you maybe? Please uh, tell a little bit about the bank and your decision uh, to, to join them after you you finished school. And I think mm -hmm. we were in two thousand nine, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, there was also some some break in in between uh, school and, and starting work uh, because I also understood that maybe I want to, to have a short pause to to understand uh, what what I like in my life and what I don't like to travel a bit and. Uh, and uh, to, to to see uh, how, how 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 people are doing in, in other countries and things like that. But then, yeah, when, at one point I understood that uh, I, I need to start doing something and I to need to start my career. And uh, uh, I was looking just um, to, to 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 do it in, in a in a finance industry, as as I was already telling. And I was actually looking to entry any entry level positions uh, in banks or finance companies. Uh, just because uh, from the beginning, I strongly understood that uh, by by being inside and working inside, uh, I, I I'll be able to to learn things much more and much faster uh, than than it could happen in in the university. And uh, I would say I uh, I yeah I was right uh, about it, and, and maybe about that I will tell you next. Uh, so, so yeah, and that's why that's why I was just able. Uh, sorry, not able, but, but I was just looking for 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 any any open positions that that bank or finance companies could offer to me. And this is how uh, how how my how my journey in finance industry started. And as I mentioned, um, yeah, I think I was right because I would say in a half a year and in a bank, I have learned uh, as much as I think people usually learn in university in three four years. And even in that period, you usually can't learn all the details and all the specifics that that you can do uh, by just being uh, inside and learning it all from 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 inside. Okay. Um, so, what was your uh, what was your job? You you mentioned it was an entry level job. Um, so you you made something like the the cashier in the front or. Um, how do you develop uh, through the first uh, year mm -hmm. in, the, in the bank? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was an entry level position. It was contact center. I was a uh, customer service officer. I think that was the right uh, name for the position. So I was just answering uh, people, phone calls, emails, uh, and uh, chat messages. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is how I, how it all started. And then quite fast, uh, I advanced to cash management position. Which was uh, the position where I was uh, responsible for uh, internet banks and payments of the biggest bank clients, and I would say this experience is still something that helps me on daily, or maybe not daily basis, but but that helps still helps me because I very good understand how all those payments uh, are working in the banks, and this is still something that. Time to time, uh, platforms and investors are having struggle with uh, with them depositing and withdrawing funds from 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 platforms, and and yeah, this is still helping uh, me uh, now just to be able to sometimes help my colleagues or or others by, by explaining how those things are in reality working in the bank because I have seen everything from uh, of it uh, from inside. So you know both uh, sides, which which is an advantage today. Um, so do you already uh, already dealt with uh, with loans in the bank? So uh -huh. do you do you, do you have get, got an idea how how loans are done or worked on in the, in the bank? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yes, yeah. so, yeah, I was also participating uh, in issuing uh, personal loans, same also mortgage loans. But uh, but yeah, but back then 
I was not thinking that there is also a possibility to invest uh, fractionally in such a loan. So, so yeah, I was I was more in the, involved uh, in in the lending part, but uh, but uh, but uh, but yeah, fractional investing came on, uh, came in my life only after. Okay, uh, so you went with Arnodia, I think, for three years. Uh, from from your banker's point of view, um, how did you um, experience the the change um, in, in the banking sector? It changed from what you just mentioned uh, fr from from big uh, mortgage loans or uh, personal loans uh, to fractional loans. Uh, how was the view of the bank on the on the on the fintech uh, scenery? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say as it was already almost an old. Ten, nine, eight years ago. So, so yeah, situation was, uh, in a way, very skeptical just because all the banks were scared of uh, all the fintech companies in, in the country. I would say, I would say it was like that. So, uh, for example, whenever you see uh, that a person is having uh, a loan from a fintech company in their bank account. Is, it is kind of uh, straight away strong no from from a bank to this client in terms of uh, giving a loan to this person. Whenever the bank sees something like that in in the account statement of, of a person, uh, they straight away think that this person is financially uneducated. They don't know what to do. They 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 are not returning uh, their loans. What is not uh through i would say in 95 percent of the cases but uh, but banks uh, tend to think like that and i think this is something that unfortunately haven't uh, changed in their in their, in their thinking so of course there could be situations that loans could be taken without thinking but uh, and the person is having a bad payment discipline but uh, uh all those um, uh, alternative lenders, they are uh, checking such things and they are not uh, giving loans to the person who are having bad payment discipline. But banks, I think, uh, still haven't uh, uh, changed the, their mindset about it, at least from all the information that I, I know uh, about the market now. And I think we also have to take into consideration that banks just uh, crashed about eight, eight, nine years ago uh, with, the, with mm -hmm. the finance crisis worldwide. Uh, where mm -hmm. they where they had to, uh, to meet uh, several regulations uh, about the loan payments or, or uh, t taking or giving debts to uh, to their customers, um, so um, look, looking into P two P lending at, at that time, you just mentioned it was more like the like the dark or the the black sector of of, of banking, but. Uh, if you uh, we, we are now today like like 10 15 uh, years uh, further on the the platforms existing at that time i, I remember bondora twino mintos uh, things like that they are quite uh, pretty player uh, quite uh, big players uh, at, at this uh, at today or at, at the moment um so what what was um the 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 point for you to uh, to make the change to um, uh, to go into this uh, fintech area and uh, to not stay with the bank at that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, at, at one moment I understood that uh, uh, that the work uh, in a bank is a bit boring and also sometimes maybe too 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 bureaucratic in a way that uh, there are so many procedures, regulations, and if you want to do something, you you, you just really can because you, you need to to get accept from that uh, budget from from there and uh, and things like that and that's why i was uh, i was i was just looking around what's happening uh, in in a job market uh, and so on and then um, one day i saw some uh, meters pr about the bail loans and uh, i straight away saw that um, their idea about offering a possibility uh, to fractionally invest in uh, already issued loans in my opinion, back then, it, uh, I saw that it will be something game-changing. And uh, it got my interest uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the first day when I saw that. And then a few weeks later, I saw open propositions at, uh, at Mintos company. I applied and eventually got a job there. So, so yeah, that's, this is how, how my journey in, uh, 
I would say fintech world, uh, which is uh, not the traditional bank and finance industry. That's how it started for me. Okay. Um, so looking back, it was uh, 20, 2015, 2016, uh, when you when you changed. Uh, it was also the time in, in the P2P industry where it developed, where uh, big, uh, big, big yields were, were uh, earned for, for the company, but also for the, uh, for the investors. Um, doesn't it uh, felt or tasted a little bit too hot or was it something you just mentioned uh, which, which fascinated you? And you, you wanted to be a big part of, 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 of what is maybe coming up um, also including the big risk uh, of, of falling down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say uh, in a way uh, the growth, even though at, at, at some point uh, it was exponential and it was very fast, uh, at the same time, at least from my perspective, it was quite organic because um, at the beginning we started uh, doing it all then and uh, after, uh, after I joined Mintos, uh, quite fast, Mintos decided uh, to pivot, uh, to change their approach, to offer their, uh, their marketplace not only uh, for, for, for the loans they issued themselves back then, but also for the other loan originators. And that's why uh, uh, those changes were coming and, and the platform was uh, growing and changing. And that's why we, uh, as, as Mintos employees, were growing together together with it and experiencing uh, new, 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 like, new things happening in the market and things like that. And that's why I think, um, yeah, in a way it was uh, even organic growth because you could, you could uh, uh, see all those new events happening and, and grow with them and, and offer uh, products uh, for, 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 for investors. Uh, and I, th I, I think also back then even, and for, for that I would say uh, we can, we can kind of see two sides. One good side is that, uh, 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 that means us, like people were not experiencing any any losses. I would say for the first five years, but from one point uh, or one side is good, just because you you all the time earn and uh, all, only only good things happen. And then uh, when when uh, something bad happens, people people uh, uh, haven't seen any bad things there for five or more years, and then just they just don't understand that. If you invest in double digit, uh, like uh, that double digit uh, return investment, that sometimes this can materialize and it happens. Of course, maybe if, if it would have happened faster, people wouldn't understand that it's happening, uh, that it's happening and, and that it has to be taken into consideration. At the same time, people have had so long. Uh, period with, with only good uh, times and that's why it was in a way shocked when, when, uh, when some bad things started to happen. So and that's why I think we can we can think about it from, from, from two sides and, and, and it's hard to say what what would be better if, uh, if it would be going in a bit different uh, manner as, as it was. Okay, uh, so you stayed with Mentors for about six years. Uh, what was your your entry drop, and how do you develop uh, throughout the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I joined Mintos when uh, when when there was um, only around ten people working. So as a, I would say, as an every startup, long, uh, long time yeah, ago. <laughs> yeah, and, and and it was uh, the the most interesting uh, thing I would say in it all, just because if you join a startup where, where where there are only ten people and company is uh, growing quite fast. You can uh, experience doing a lot of different things uh, at, in the same time, and this is what what I like personally, and this is what uh, have definitely helped uh, to to grow uh, for myself much faster, maybe than it would be in in just a regular company that is not growing uh, that fast. So initially, I would say uh, I was doing everything a bit from uh, from everything, like uh, assisting uh, boss boss founders. Working with uh, with developers, working with investors, uh, working with banks, uh, and whatnot. So, so yeah, that's why that's why it was um, it was very exciting period for me at the beginning. Then, of course, company was growing, uh, the headcount of uh, company was growing, and then eventually every position was becoming more and more defined because for for specific tasks, uh, pe people were hired, and a uh, company was growing. And then at the end, uh, I ended up uh, being um, 
head of some investor service team and, and then we were responsible for for serving all the all the investors of uh of Mintus. okay cool so it it sounds uh very like the the typical um a startup story uh which you maybe know from from books or or movies uh so was it really that like to work there um like like 20 hours a day seven days a week uh just pizza and and, and beer or uh, can you maybe describe a little bit about more the uh, rhythm of the team? Yeah, now, actually, it was not that dramatic. Um, yeah, there have been a few few periods where 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 it was maybe like that, but uh, but it was not uh, for that like for all the six years uh, when I was there. And uh, I would say also um, the experience experiencing such a period where when you need to work I don't know twenty or maybe sixteen hours a day, this is also something that definitely helps in a life. From perspective that you understand that you don't want to be in such state, and uh, it uh, kind of motivates your mind to think for solutions for that, and uh, this this definitely helps. So I, I would say I have been in such a period. I most probably have, uh, I have been maybe close to some burnout, but but uh, uh, but but uh, but this motivation to get out of it as fast as possible and to 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 to, to create the environment uh, where you know don't need to experience it i would say that has helped me a lot and in such a way um i i grew uh, and the company uh, also grew together with me and me grew together with the company so i don't know what 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 comes first <laughs> okay i love hearing this because it's it, it it shows uh, that uh, of course a startup have, have several periods of of hard working time, um, but this uh, Instagram meme like uh, hard uh, hard work pays off uh, is just what you just confirmed. Uh, you 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 did your job. Uh, you found um, smart ways uh, to to avoid burnouts and uh, things like that uh, coming through through hard work. Um, so it's 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 very interesting. Uh, to to listen to it. Um, so uh, at that state, it, I think uh, 2016, 17, or whenever, uh, did you um, saw those uh, those uh, things coming with uh, where um, Mintos is dealing uh, with today? Um, did you did you know about the regulation? Did you know about uh, the times uh, where uh, well, loan originators might might struggle? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. In, in this uh, situation, in a way, it was interesting that um, they have had a fight with the with local authorities uh, since the beginning. Because when they started uh, this project or, or the company uh, or um, the product that they are offering, at the beginning, as the local uh, regulator uh, or local consumer protection agency, as they were not understanding what Mintos is doing because um, they were doing something for the first time in, in, in the country, they were uh, willing to close Mintos, but uh, as everything uh, was uh, being done according to the law, and no, no, uh, no kind of bad things were, were done there. There was there was uh, really no reason to do that, and that's why it was interesting, also in a way, experience to, to get through it, because um, um, people and uh, there and, and uh, like Mintos, uh, everyone from Mintos um, from the beginning. Everyone wanted to, to cooperate with local authorities. We, we wanted to, to, to teach them how, how those things are working so, so we can uh, have a good contact in them and, uh, and uh, like, uh, grow together and uh, like, uh, to, 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 to have everything in order. So yeah, that, that was one of um, uh, the, the interesting experiences at the beginning. But um, about um, those, uh, all those um, low originator issues, yeah, as I was already answering in, in my one another question, and I told you that maybe it would even be better if uh, if something would be happening much faster, because then in investors would have experience with, all, with it all, and then they would not be so shocked as they were, for example, when the first COVID uh, uh, hit, hit, the, hit the world and some, some low originators uh, got in trouble. If, if they would be experiencing it faster, maybe it will be more understandable for them. But during the first COVID wave, I think some people uh, from from their reactions, we saw that they are thinking that their investment is uh, still uh, the same as doing deposit in a bank with a rate uh, 0 0.1 percent uh, as doing investments from interest with a rate uh, 
twelve percent annually. So, so, so yeah, that was that was uh, yeah, in a way, uh, interesting experience to see. Uh, also. Yeah, it's always uh, important to mention that it's always the the risk uh, reward uh, ratio. If you got twelve or fifteen or whatever percent, uh, the risk is much higher. And uh, sure, so sure. we, as as investor, uh, you have to take care about it and uh, to get, uh, have have to get into it. But also, honestly, uh, most investors uh, just see these eleven, twelve, uh, thirteen percent. Uh, they all run uh, through it like just uh, just like we had it uh, last year with the cryptos. Uh, we had it in P2P lending. Yeah, so I think this is a kind of a cycle uh, where investors uh, learn and the whole industry gets more serious um, about what it's doing uh, it, it itself uh -huh. there. So um, did you have uh, something to do at Mentos or did you know about the rating of, of the um, loan originators? Uh, because uh, uh, later on uh, you decided uh, to join uh, one of those uh, loan originators. Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually, I was not not participating at all in uh, in uh, scoring uh, those uh, loan incentives. There was uh, already specific big departments made for that, which is the credit uh, risk department. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I, I only on a broad level knew the things uh, that they are expecting, how they are doing that, how often they are doing that, what uh, things they pay attention to. But, uh, but yeah, but not on the details. Uh, yeah, in details, I was not participating. Uh, okay. So, uh, how how did it come that you uh, changed your job after six years uh, at, at Mentos? Uh, mm -hmm. How yeah. what was the foundation of this decision? Yeah, yeah. it was um, in, uh, also in a way interesting situation. Um, I was um, living that winter in Africa, and then uh, one uh, one day, uh, headhunters approached me, and then. Uh, I understood that uh, they are approaching me uh, just uh, because of uh, founders of Escape. It's uh, Mati Sanchez and Davis uh, Barons are looking for uh, for a um, director for, for, for the, uh, the platform they are planning to launch. So we started to talk with them and then um, and eventually uh, we got uh, to, to the point where they offered them leading me uh, this company for them. And yeah, this is, uh, and of course for me, in a way, it was a hard decision just because Mintos uh, has been um, one of the most coolest companies for me because the culture and environment was amazing there. But at the same time, uh, the offer also was great just because I had an opportunity to uh, to go and uh, use all the knowledge and experience that I have gained uh, in. Uh, creating or setting up a new company and that was kind of exciting for me and yeah, at the end I of course decided to, to, to take this opportunity. Okay, so uh, summing it up, uh, after school you went to bank because uh, you did good with numbers. Um, you, you take all the, all the knowledge into you, um, then you found FinTech, uh, which was very interesting and about numbers of course. Um, you put all the knowledge and uh, then you develop from a head off uh, in, into a CEO of, of Askitit. How does that felt at the first moment, at your first date maybe? Yeah, uh, actually one of uh, the ideas for, 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 for the way of uh, my living is just to uh, stay humble as, uh, as long as it is possible. And this is, this is what I, I was thinking, just, I, I'm just... Uh, I'm still nothing, and uh, I still a lot of things are in front of me, and I need to prove myself that that I can do that, and and, and I have all this experience and knowledge, and and, uh, and that I can uh, make it in action. So this this was was actually my, my thinking uh, this uh, year ago, uh, when 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 or year and a bit more ago, when 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 I when I made this decision, and when we were starting the the escape project. So yeah, this is my approach in such situations usually. Okay, great. Uh, so since uh, one or two years, uh, we are experiencing um, several loan originators uh, building their own platform, just like Eskitit is uh, the the um, platform from from Clean Finance, uh, which is uh, still a loan originator uh, at Mentors. Uh, so is is there a trend? Um, 
to 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 build your own platform uh, as a loan originator but the advantage with what is maybe the disadvantage so uh -huh. um, maybe maybe you can talk a little about about the reasons why cream finance uh, did it uh -huh. yeah i would say for every loan originator and uh, every platform most probably explanation and situation is, is uh, different just because they they have different uh, di they are in a different uh, situation uh, like like all of them uh, but in cream, in cream finance situation, it was um, that uh, at one point they understood that uh, they are very well known uh, brand in the industry with uh, with an outstanding reputation. Uh, they have never lost uh, any investor funds. They have never had uh, pending payments, for example, on the same uh, mintos. But investors didn't really notice that just because they were focusing uh, more more on all those bad cases, all those uh, loan initiatives that defaulted. And then um, they just uh, saw that um, they want to um, create their own platform with loyal investors who really understand the quality of the loan originator, quality of the loans um, they, they, they issue. That's one thing, uh, at least in the green finance and aesthetic case. And also, uh, in, if we are uh, thinking about it in the long term, we also saw that uh, cost wise um, it was making sense. So, yeah, that was. Uh, how the decision uh, was uh, was um, uh, made, and uh, yeah, as I already mentioned, that the founders have never lost any investor funds in uh, more of more than twelve years of their experience, and it was a strong, strong um, argument uh, for their uh, partners um, before P two P because uh, uh, obviously there were um, already guys who were investing in in their businesses directly, and they they saw saw that they really value um, their their attitude and uh, uh, and experience, and uh, again uh, the fact that they are not losing um, those funds for investors, and that's why they wanted to expand their partners' network. Let's call it like that uh, to P two P community. So now. Uh, every every investor that who joins the Skatit can in a way join our founders in their business journey and uh, earn together with 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 them. So yeah, that's 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 the short story. Okay, great. I mean, it it, it shows the development of the P two E industry. Uh, some some loan originators are uh, building their own platform, just like like uh, you did with Skatit. Um, others are joining uh, several marketplaces and publishing uh, their loan. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's uh, from a from a um, loan originator side, it's it's a kind of of a diversification. Um, uh, your your risk and not depending on just one marketplace or one platform or uh, things like that. So it's it's a very reasonable um, yeah p point uh, to do, uh, which which you just. Uh, mentioned and, and showed. So uh, when you when you started with Askit, uh, the first uh, talks about the job um, was there uh, something like a roadmap? Um, you're now one nearly one and a half years uh, with Askit. Um, hmm. Did you work on that roadmap? Are you where you wanted to be at that moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course we we had uh, we have had uh, set some some plan for what we want to achieve uh, in in the first first years. And uh, I would say we are more or less on the path we were thinking we will be. So yeah, now uh, we have uh, like more, more than 60 million uh, euros are funded through, through us. We are managing uh, more than 14 million euros uh, from investors uh, through our platform. And uh, yeah, this is something also what we were having uh, in our minds. Of course, uh, war slowed uh, down our growth a bit but i would say now uh, we are again on the on the track where we were around january and february which were uh, really the best months for us and um, now our june was more or less uh, uh, at the same pace so yeah that's why i would say we are we are achieving more or less what uh, we expected to 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 uh to achieve and yeah, of course there was this one slowdown which was which was caused caused by war, but but that that's a natural thing, especially uh, for 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 investing because people usually at the beginning beginning of such such events tend to be more cautious. 
But uh, luckily, in our situations, we are not any now exposed um, to, to countries that that are that are that are that are closed uh, or that are affected. So that was, in a way, very good thing for us and our investors that they haven't been any now affected. Okay. Um, so you just mentioned uh, the war happening in Ukraine. Um, is there some some kind of uh, of, of more struggles? I mean, uh, we we all know for, uh, how our startups are working from from movies and stuff like that. So, but usually there are big uh, fuck up stories behind it and uh, a lot of struggles. So, uh, mm -hmm. did you face some of them, which was maybe the biggest one to overcome for you? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say I think and I think that that's the thing for for any new platform that is launching. It is uh, one of the the biggest struggle for them is investor acquisition. So at the beginning, you somehow need to, to tell investors that you exist, that uh, most probably every platform that they are saying that they are great, that they are the best ones and, and things like that. So, so yeah, the investor acquisition has, uh, I think, has, has been uh, one of the most uh, important struggles for us in a way that we are always thinking about how to how to how how to acquire more and more of those investors, and uh, yeah, this this has always been on our mind. I would say uh, from from other perspectives, we haven't um, had anything that big or dramatic that would um, be affecting us. So from such a perspective, we have been lucky, and also for us, I think. Uh, Uh, in terms of investor acquisition, um, uh, our brand and our reputation and experience in the market helps because people know me from Mintos, they know founders uh, from Green Finance, uh, and they know their reputation and that uh, they have never lost any investor funds. And that has been definitely helping us uh, on our way to, uh, to grow. Okay. Um... So looking at the roadmap again, you just mentioned it, you are more or less where you wanted to be. Um, mm -hmm. look, looking into the future, where do you see yourself and ask it in, I don't know, about uh, two to three years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, we, we will continue to focus on the same um, uh, expansion of our investors community uh, as uh, we, we and, and continue to, to offer them a very quality of loans that we are already doing uh, and uh, yeah, we will first of all focus on our uh, on the on the main things that that we know the best so that's one um that's one yeah then then uh, uh, at one point also uh, founders they are thinking about um, uh, new new businesses and new things that uh, they will be doing so eventually most probably something from that uh, would be um, offered to investors too And we are also uh, looking um, at uh, some, I would say, let's call them uh, new school investment products uh, that uh, we could uh, offer on our platform too. So, for example, uh, as you maybe know, some time ago we started to offer uh, a possibility to invest in uh, crypto, crypto stable coins uh, through a scattered platform. And in such a way, we kind of we are kind of trying to combine uh, two investment worlds. One is crypto, one in, and another is uh, P2P in a way, and then in such a way, uh, those investors who have some funds in crypto, and we started uh, with the reason with those stable coins because they are not fluctuating, and then uh, then um, those those are assets that kind of have all the time the same value, uh, and uh, so investors uh, can use them to invest in loans. And um, investing by investing in loans, you um, directly see uh, where you invest those funds. You know who manages them. You know where they are used. And then, in such a way, investors, in a way, have better visibility and transparency that uh, that uh, what 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 are, what is being done with the, with the funds funds and how how in reality they are earning some interest on so. So from an investor's uh, point of view, you're uh, developing from a loan originator, which has already been uh, quite good diversified. Green Finance is, is uh, active in, in several countries uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so investors are able to diversify. And uh, you're now trying to, to add new products or new um, 
let's say is a waste waste of an investment um, to the platform, which which are uh, quite interesting. So um, looking looking at SQT today, looking at SQT in five years, uh, how much uh, how how much time do you want to double uh, the the team, uh, the business, uh, the the uh, the return? Is there any kind of uh, we want to get the P two P industry ranked number one, or uh, what's what's the idea behind? Yeah, I would say yeah. For for for, for the nearest years, we see that uh, we can double our size uh, in 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 every year. But at the same time, we need to understand that uh, um, we are kind of in a way mono lending platform. That means that we are uh, offering loans that we issue ourselves, and that's why um, and we want to be. Uh, really uh, responsible for 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 the loan quality that that uh, we are offering, and that's why we have never thought to to kind of be uh, the player number one just because of the offer and uh, of the business model that 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 we are having. So that's 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 one one of uh, the things that uh, we are we are keeping uh, uh, in, in in our minds for 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 uh, for our future. Okay. That sounds very healthy uh, from an investor's uh, standpoint. Uh, so, um, what about you yourself? Um, you, we, we just discovered your your CV. Um, you, you mentioned you worked in a, in a startup uh, quite quite hard. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of hours worked. A lot of in, input yet yet to manage uh, within your head. Um, so, what what kind of, of of balance you're trying to do? Is there something beside work? Uh, which which you are doing as as a private person to uh, to overcome the the stress and the um, the work. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think uh, all of us must have something uh, in their life besides work just to have a uh, I would say balanced state of uh, mind. So yeah, at least in my in my situation, uh, so I'm very much into sports, but uh, but uh, from different perspectives. One perspective is uh, I do sports myself. I do CrossFit, and uh, this this helps me to to have this uh, balanced state of mind uh, that that I have just uh, told you about. Because I have really seen uh, how it helps me to get out of very stressful situations uh, in my work. For example, when I'm overloaded and uh, when I when I do those sports, I, I, my mind is relaxing, and then in the long term, I have I have really seen how 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 it helps me and that's why that's why i'm uh, i'm still continuing to do that and maybe at some point i'm, I'm even doing it too much but, uh, but, uh, but as i have seen that it uh, brings uh, uh, very good results in terms of my mindfulness so that's why that's why i continue to do, to do that and there are also other sport perspectives where i'm involved so i'm also a referee for a sport uh, called floorball it is not really uh, that much popular in the world, but it is quite popular here in Nordics and in Baltics. And uh, also being a referee, it is an interesting experience to, to become mentally uh, stronger. And uh, yeah, that this is what I also like and, uh, and I do, uh, yeah, do in my free time. And um, I also like attending uh, different sport events uh, here locally and also when I go abroad because it's an interesting experience. To, uh, to to see how different culture people are um, uh, I don't know how they are acting uh, while 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 watching those sports some are very very, very enthusiastic about uh, it some someone is only going there to, to as, as, as to theater so so that's why it's also one interesting thing that what, uh, what I try to but that's what I try to do, but but yeah, besides sports, as I already mentioned in the beginning of our conversation, I, I like to also experience uh, living abroad. So that's why uh, I, I, I do that. And I don't really call it traveling, as um, I usually tend to leave for a longer period than just a vacation. And then so in such a way, I think I can experience uh, uh, countries I visit from a really much different perspective than, than you usually uh, do when, when you just go uh, for a vacation. And I think it's a very good thing for, for most of people who are now working in different companies, office companies that 
current working environments and, and understanding about how work is being now now allows us to, to do such a remote uh, work more and more. Okay, so you're looking for the countries uh, you're spending the winter with, um, where where there are crossfit boxes, or uh, how how do you do crossfit uh, during these periods? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. So uh, it depends. So, so if you if you go to smaller cities, it is harder to to, to find crossfit boxes. But if you go to uh, to very big cities, uh, you usually can find very modern crossfit uh, boxes there. So you usually. Um, I check it uh, destination by destination, and then just understand uh, how how I can do sports there. So, so yeah, and but also I would say uh, in also in a regular gym you can you can also find a way how to do cross PT things uh, things things in it. So that that's uh, my thinking about it. And also uh, you, uh, quite often um, during my uh going abroad one of the sports things i do is just running so running you can do everywhere in in the world uh, especially when it's warm outside and uh, when there is no snow and no no ice on speed so, so that's also a very good uh, way for me to to to, to, to do sports and also at the same time uh, keep keep my mind in very good uh, balance I absolutely understand as a passionate runner, so I can absolutely follow uh, what you just mentioned. Uh, so, are there any plans uh, for this winter? You already decided where to 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 go? Uh, uh, not really, not really. I will see. Uh, let's uh, let's see what uh, what autumn will will bring us in terms of all those uh, things that have been happening in the world during the last uh, two years. I don't want to mention them, but. but Maybe something in regards to that will also change change uh, the environment in the world. But uh, besides that, yeah, I don't have any uh, specific plans for winter. Besides the fact that most probably in October I will be um, in Cyprus um, mixing uh, CrossFit with with the work. But what I have also been doing uh, some of some of my time in during during the last years. But uh, but besides that, I don't have. Uh, Anything, anything planned, and sometimes I like just to, to do some things very immediately if I if my calendar allows that. So, for example, you just check that uh, you are free, and uh, you just go on the day next day or day after and uh, manage it in such a way. Okay, so to tomorrow I'm a day off, and I will see where where my flight will take me. <laughs> yeah, and and, and and also one thing is that uh, also. Important and sometimes people uh, are uh, not understanding that. But sometimes also in such a way you can get, uh, for example, very good flight prices. It's not always expensive to to to, to go, for example, next day. But because sometimes some planes are more empty than others, and then you can uh, still go to get the normal prices for for for, for such a uh, type of adventures if you can call mm -hmm. them like that. And you're not overthinking it too much, like uh, what mm -hmm. might happen then. Uh, happen yeah. this time that uh, yeah. yeah, so it it's, it's very it always needs to have uh, money to for a ticket back and that that's it. Yeah. So if you do, if you don't like it, just uh, you just stop and uh, and go back. Okay, cool. So, uh, what is your big goal in life? Why are you waking up, uh, getting out of bed every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe my answer will be simple, but, but sometimes uh, simplicity is the, is the best way how to how to think about things. So at least in my situation, my and my life, my personal goal is just to be happy and and to do things that make me happy. Uh, and um, yeah, this is this is how I'm thinking about it. And I also very much like idea of um, uh, getting one percent better every day. So this is this is also what I think. For example, when I when I get out of bed, so I just just uh, become one percent better today, and then uh, in a year it will become I don't know what was the correct calculation, but it was probably something more than three hundred fifty percent better, and then uh, that that, that yes. would be amazing result. So, so so yeah, this is this is my thinking about that. So uh, last question, and I think I can guess uh, the answer. Uh, is there any kind of uh, source, a, a good book maybe, 
uh, a movie or something like that, which influenced you, uh, your your way you did over the last years and you want to develop over the next years? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, the, I would say the, the, the main thing with uh, what I'm doing to, 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 to educate myself is uh, listening uh, to podcasts. I'm, I'm uh, doing it a lot and I listen a lot, but uh, most of them are work not related, I would say, and uh, I do it uh, not also on work not related, just to have a broader picture of different happenings uh, around us. Uh, so, so yeah, that's 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 one thing, and uh, I read also a lot, but I would say, say I read more um, like some online articles and things like that, just to uh, also understand, for example, what is happening, say, in the fintech world, but not only in the fin uh, fintech world, and uh, this also helps me to to, to develop and, and to understand uh, um, all all the things around us. Uh, but uh, to answer your question uh, about uh, what what what's the main thing, what uh, our main main idea that uh, that uh, has been uh, that has uh, been the yeah, most interesting for me um, recently, uh, or maybe not not that recently, but 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 yeah, but but, but I'll say lately. Uh, yeah, maybe it will sound silly in a way, but uh, but this, this this definitely is one of the also important things for me and uh, that's just uh, saving money and investing money so i have i have understood that uh, uh, eventually that could make us uh, more independent or fully independent if uh, if such a state could be achieved in in the in, in, our, in our life i don't know uh, and uh, that's uh, the, and the being independent is, is the best position to to achieve in a life, uh, in my opinion. So that, that's why that's why yeah, this is this is something what what I focus a lot on. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I guess it would be maybe the book uh, Atomic Habits, uh, which is uh, which has the under title like uh, uh, improve yourself by one percent every day, uh, just like you, you mentioned before. Yeah. Be, uh, so, but I mean, in, in investing, in the end, is also getting better by any percentage every day. Um, the more you invest, uh, the the more freedom you're able uh, to to enjoy. And so, yeah. Um, thank you very much for your time, uh, for those insights uh, from from your from your CV, from your uh, reasons to change, and uh, from your way you want uh, you want to go in the future. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to uh, to share the stage with you. I hope there was uh, a lot of, uh, of, of of in it for the for the listeners and the viewers on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. So we put everything uh, relevant into the show notes. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Have a very good time with Eskitit. I think we will meet at the at the, one of the next Fintelis events again. And. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Vitalis. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks. I enjoyed it uh, a lot. So it was very interesting to talk not only about all those work-related matters, but, but, but what we talk every day, but, but also to, 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 to discuss and uh, think about uh, matters outside. So. Great. So uh, bye for then, and see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.